Hello guys and welcome. This is Point of View and today I'm driving the Passat GTE. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you might think what's the GTE? Well it's the GTI version of the Passat which is a plug-in hybrid. Hmm. It has a 1.4 liter petrol engine with a electric engine combined they put out 160 kilowatts. It's less than a GTI. Hmm. First of all, I want to thank Möller and Tülemiste. They have a great inventory and a really friendly staff. If you want to test any of the brand new Volkswagens, just contact them and I'm sure they will help you out. Today, I'm going to try and find out whether this car deserves to have the GT in its name and also what the E means. Let's start from the basics. On the outside it's almost like any other Passat. It has some different wheels, different LED running lights which are very cool by the way. They really do separate the Passat GT from the rest of the R lines and high lines and whatever lines. It looks good. The wheels take their imagination from electric vehicles, so they're not pretty, but they are functional. So yeah, on the outside it's basically like any other Passat. You won't notice it in a crowd unless you really know what it is. This car can travel in electric mode only for 50 kilometers. And actually that's, that's quite impressive because the batteries aren't that big and it's not that expensive if you compare it to other rivals which have hybrid engines. This car with its base price is around 41,000 euros. It's roughly the same as a Lexus IS in its base trim, but this car has much more equipment as standard. You can't buy a comfort line or trend line. You only have this high line version, which means Alcantara seats, nice big screen. Yes, you do have to get some options to make it special, but all in all, you have all the kit you want just as it is. If you get the Lexus, you are going to want to have the luxury or the executive version, which adds up to being roughly 10,000 euros more expensive. So this is sort of a bargain, actually. Then again, when you look at the regular Passat, let's say the 1.4 or the 1.8, it's around 10,000 euros cheaper. So is this car 10,000 euros better? Do you save some money by using electricity? I will talk about that soon great chance to show you the electric part. Right now I'm gonna put it in E mode and in E mode electric mode only which means it won't use any petrol power. If I floor it the engine will not cut in. I'm using only electric power. It's silent. It's really nice. No judder, no nothing. It's it's quite nice actually, it's, it's really enjoyable, I have to be honest. Even in highway speeds it's perfectly fine, you just put your foot down and it actually pulls. It really does have some pulling power, even in electric mode only. Since this is a GTE, I have to talk about the GT part, which means you can put it in GTE mode. Ooh. Then you get this GTE logo showing up here. Now you're using all the power from the petrol and the electric engine third gear, second gear, it's even pumping engine sound through the speakers so you really feel like you're in a sporty car or a yeah, GTI, sure. This DSG isn't as fast as a GTI's but it's really nothing to complain about. The sound that's coming through the speakers, it's more like, I don't know, it's it sounds like a straight 5 or it's similar to the Ford Focus RS really. It's not a straight 4, definitely not a straight 4, it's, it's more punchier and it has more deeper sound to it. Just listen to the engine sound, okay? And now when I put it in E mode, it's using only electric. Listen to this. 
it's like a Tesla. It's quiet and nice. The hybrid mode is more of a mix and match between the petrol and the electric. Then you have the charge mode, which means you can charge up the electric batteries. Right now I'm using only the 1.4 liter petrol and the car is completely different again. Now listen to this, I'm gonna do an acceleration. So, first gear. Completely different, again. This car has three characters and they are really, really different. And I like it, I like it a lot. Now quickly I'm gonna talk about the interior. You guys know that I like the Passat, I like the Superb. They are really great cars. Interior quality is basically top notch. You can't really find bad materials anywhere. Yeah, some, some plastics, but it's not that bad. For a car like this, in this price range, you really can't expect more. The seats are comfortable, they hug you just in the right places. The Alcantara will keep you warm in the winter time and cooled in the summer time. There's lots of equipment, heated seats, adaptive cruise control, lane assist, blind spot assist, although this car doesn't have that. There's a really nice clock in the dashboard. Everything you touch and feel, the steering wheel, leather is nice. This the gear lever feels solid enough, nothing rattles or squeaks, even the buttons on the steering wheel are nice. There's really nothing really to complain about. This is the one thing that Lexus hybrids are missing. You can't use only electric power. If you put the foot down, the petrol engine will kick in. In this car you can set it so that it's only electric power. I really love the fact that you have the option not to use it or if you are in a pickle, there are no charging stations around, you can switch it to full petrol power and then you just find the nearest gas station and fill it up and you're good to go. Of course this car has front wheel drive which means the grip in this, let's be honest, shitty weather is not that good. It would be perfect with all wheel drive and there I say it, I wish it had a bit more power. I think the sweet spot would have been to mix and match the 2 liter petrol engine with the hybrid powertrain. Insulation on the inside is pretty good as well. Of course there is some road noise and tire noise, but to be honest that is to be expected because when you're in electric mode only you really start to notice all the different sounds coming from the outside. If you're in a petrol powered car the engine sound sort of cuts out all the different sounds but in this you hear them more. I am really liking the electric power but I just wish that in GTE mode it would be more GT than E. I just wish it had a bit more oomph. Not, not by much just a little bit. As you can probably see this car has the active info display. It is configurable just as you like. You can have your navigation, you can make the dials bigger and smaller. It's a really great screen and I would not buy this car without it or any Passat or Volkswagen these days in that matter. If you're gonna buy a car like this brand new, you're gonna get the bigger screen, the 9.2 inch with no volume buttons because that's the way to go but I, I don't like it. I wish it had more buttons like this. Now, I'm gonna quickly show you the outside of this car. Ignition on. Let's turn the ignition off. Anyway, this is the saloon model, but it still has an electric tailgate. How nice is that? The boot is big enough for my drone and my camera stuff and a charging port. It is a bit smaller than the regular Passat, but the, the drawbacks are just so minute, you just don't notice them. You close it by pushing a button, no problem there. Now sitting at the back, 
this is still a Passat, which means there is loads of legroom, a handrest with some cup holders. You have a ski hatch also, which is a nice feature. Yeah, you can opt for the heated back seats, but this one does not have them. Materials just as same as in the front. No issues there also. Now, as you probably presume, this car has keyless entry. This is the Volkswagen Passat key. It's solid, nice to hold in the hand. Now, all four doors have sensors, which is really nice. You can open and close them. You do not have to put the key anywhere. You can just leave it right there. Foot on the brake, push start, and the electric engine goes on. Hmm. As I said, the newer display is a bit better, but this isn't bad really. It's really quite nippy and although the graphics aren't the best in the world, they aren't bad. As you can probably see, the screen has a sensor. If I put my hand here, the options are available. If I take my hand away, the options go away. Neat, huh? The big question is, is GTE better than a regular Passat? And if I was in the market for a car like this, would I spend 10,000 euros more for a plug-in hybrid than a regular petrol version? It's a really difficult question. If you do the math, there is no way in just reasonable driving that you're gonna make up for the cost of this car. But that's not the whole point because this car has a completely different character than the regular Passat. And that's the key word with this car, I think. If I got a sensible discount on the GT and I stepped into the dealership wanting to buy a 1.8 liter fully specced Highline, I'd actually be tempted. I'd be I'd be really tempted to buy this car. It is faster, it is nicer, it's quieter, it's special, you're kinder to the environment and yet you have the GT factor. 10,000 euros? Maybe not, but if it was like 5,000 euros more than the regular Passat, I think I'd do it. You can't put the electric car feeling into numbers and stuff you have to you have to experience it it's so silent and every day journeys will become nicer due to the fact that this is an electric car okay enough rumbling i like this car i really do buy it thank you for watching there will be new videos coming very soon stay tuned and see you again guys bye